Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here was some scripture. This is what I believe is coming to my mind. For some of you who are saying, where is God in the picture? I want you to hear this. Because sometimes we do what the word tells us not to do. Excuse me. Which is lean to our own understanding instead of acknowledging him in all our ways so that he can direct our paths. Now, we lean to our own understanding because we got a brain, you know. We're not that retarded. I made it this far. Yeah, well, you make it a lot further with God's help. Now listen to what he says. Jeremiah 29, <laughs> Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is something that, uh, this, I'm going to do, uh, do one more. Proverbs 1, 28. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Now, you know what's scary about that? Those are people who don't really want to do things God's way. But when you live according to God's ways, I'm telling you, that is your ticket to, to a good win in your life. No matter what's going on, handle it God's way. Don't cuss them out. Handle it God's way. Don't steal. Handle it God's way. Don't beat somebody down. Don't do dirt for dirt, uh, tit for tat. You know, you stab me, I'm going to screw you. No. You do it God's way. Then, as Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. There are conditions to these promises God gives us. We don't always realize, but there are conditions. It's like this. If you put your hand over a flame long enough, you will be burned. If you hold ice in your hand long enough, you will get a little numb. It'll become very uncomfortable. If you stay in freezing weather and go swimming, and you're in that water over a certain amount of seconds or minutes, you can die from frostbite in minutes. So there are conditions to everything in life. There's a cause, there's an effect. You have to determine in your heart that no matter how, horrible things may seem in your life no matter how helter skelter things may be getting or seemingly going no matter what God shakes up he's making something when you shake up a smoothie you get a glass and you're shaking you put the ingredients in and you shake that baby like crazy don't you because you want all the juices and all the you even turn on the blender and that knife those blades are chopping everything and liquefying everything well you're not abusing your fruit you're not abusing your vegetables are you you're creating something and it takes that to get what you want there are some things in life that takes that for God to get what he wants out of our lives not everything is an attack from the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying? We don't see ourselves like God sees us. And if we're not praying, the level of growth, the pace of our growth, all of it is going to be drastically slowed down because we're not consulting with God. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and 
He will direct your path. When my husband and I were losing our house in one city, God told us to move to another one. How did God tell us? We started asking. We didn't just determine what we're going to do about it. We asked him. And as a result, God knowing one end from the other, the beginning from the end, the ins and outs, all the details, he knows our future. He knows what's coming up. He knew my car was going to die on me. He knew my finances were going to be very low. And he knew health-wise I could not hold down a job. So what God did was he brought this house within my reach. He brought something out of reach and brought it down where I could get my hands on it with my little bit of money. So what did he do? He laid it on our hearts for me to come out here and house hunt. We put the house in my husband's name. Couldn't put it in my name. My credit was messed up from the foreclosure in my past. Okay? So he dealt with this thing all by himself. And what did God do as a result? My husband quick claimed the house to me before he knew he was dying, which meant he trusted me. You know, I could have kicked him to the curb, but he trusted my love for him. I loved him so much. I wanted him to draw his last breath in the house that we shared together, that God blessed us with. And that's just what he did. He went into God's presence for my presence in the house he gave me. Now, yeah, I mean, we both paid, but I own a house. Listen to this. I own a house on the kind of money that most people can't even rent a room with. Do you hear that? I would have been renting a garage for the little bit of money I made. But God brought my blessing within reach because we sought him in the darkness. We consulted with him in the darkness. We prayed to him in the darkness. And the darkness felt bitter and cold and hopeless. But God shed light on our pathway and directed our path to the blessing. Do you know most people I know right now, born again Christians, who are my age or close to it, some of them even married with two incomes coming in, are living way worse than I am. I feel like God blessed me with a mansion. I live like a queen. I mean, this house cost $68,000. Come on. Really? 1,408 square feet? Can you imagine how low the mortgage is? It's ridiculous. It's half of what you would pay to rent a little room. God knew what he was doing. He took the darkness. He took the shaking. And he made a smoothie out of it, baby. And look at how I'm living now. And what I couldn't afford... God brought that within reach, either free or somebody charged so little just to be a blessing, just to compensate themselves with a little time. That a $1,500 job cost me $100. I mean, I am telling you, when God is for you and when you are seeking him, when you are calling on him, he's got all the answers. He's got all the solutions, and he knows how to hook you up. Okay, I'm done. I hope you got encouraged by that, because you do not have to fly solo, baby. That is not the name of God's game. Amen? God bless you.